Hey guys, Mr. B here again, bringing another awesome math video. And I got some. I was coloring again this evening with my uh, my toddler, and uh, I got some marker on my hand. Uh, so uh, this video, I'm going to continue with my measurement series, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between imperial units and metric units. So I teach, and I live in Canada. So in Canada, we are uh, we like to think of ourselves as being uh, totally with the metric system, so the SI system, you might hear System International or International, or the French saying, I don't know. Um, so, but the reality is in Canada, we have this sort of mixed way of doing things. Like, if you ask anybody in Canada what their height is, they're going to tell you like 5'7, five, 5'8, five, but if you look on their driver's license, they have it in centimeters. And the same thing with their weight. So if you ask someone in Canada, how much do you weigh? They might come back at you, I'm, I'm 210 pounds. But on their driver's license, it would say the equivalent of that in kilograms. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where uh, we're constantly going and talking about these units of measurement, but we don't really even much uh, give it too much thought. So uh, in this video, I'm just going to take you through the idea, uh, a couple different things that you need to look for in terms of um, the unit and what group it belongs to. So let's talk about a few different things that we might measure. So let's start with with uh, you know one of the most common ones, which would be distance. So distance obviously is you know how far or how long something is. Um, so in there are multiple units for this in imperial and SI. So SI the base unit is meters. So everything is in terms of meters. So uh, the meter meter is the base unit and everything is a power of 10 of that. So like a kilometer is 1000 meters. So that's another way of measuring a distance. A centimeter would be dividing a meter by a hundred. hundred centimeters is exactly one meters. And then you have other things like millimeters and things like that. So that's the thing about the metric system is that they're very useful for science because they're easy to convert between and um, you know you can pretty much find a prefix and these centi, centi milli and kilo uh, are all prefixes and you probably know this if you're watching this on a computer you probably know how much memory your phone has, like 8 gigabytes that's a prefix or uh, how many gigs of RAM or whatever like that stuff um, so those are prefixes so those represent the power of 10, like kilo is times 10 to the 3, centa is times 10 to the negative 2, et cetera, et cetera. Now, imperial, there are a bunch of other units that we have. So again, probably the most common one you would know right away would be an inch. Uh, then we have, next up from that would be a foot. After that, we have a yard, and then we have miles. So but, but ten, uh, depending on the certain situation, um, you know, each one of these might have its certain use, like golf, football uses yards, and miles, that would be something like if you're measuring a road distance, like how many miles is it to, from St. Anthony to Cornerbrook, um, and a foot would be useful for your height, and sometimes you need to have a combination of units, so like a lot of times you might have five foot, six inches as your height, right, so, um, so that's where you would see these measurements a lot. Now let's talk about a few other things that maybe are a little less common. Let's talk about um, volume. So volume in SI we see a lot of uh, liters. So that would be like the most common, like two liters of milk. We also see uh, centimeters cubed, which is essentially equivalent to a liter. And of course you can have any prefix of this we see uh, most of our beverages, like you know, our pops and juices and stuff like that, are in milliliters, so like 355 milliliters. So that's just a smaller prefix of um, of measurement for a volume. So like milli millimeters is smaller than meters. Okay. So in imperial, we have gallons. Hopefully, I spell this right. And I'm no imperial expert. I did not grow up with this stuff for the most part. Now our gas is measured in gallons or liters, sorry. So if, you know you probably would know how many liters uh, your, your snowmobile or your truck takes, and most people would know it in gallons in the United States. And you pay 
um, so much per gallon of gas. Uh, and the other one I think will be ounces. Now I'm not going to try and I can never spell ounces right, so hopefully that's spelled correctly. So ounces, so fluid ounces. Now there are some other things that we might want to consider. So I'm going to say a measurement for mass. So mass is not your weight. So mass is a measure of how much space you take up. So now technically we use uh, sort of an inaccurate comparison. Now I don't want to get too scientific on you guys, but when someone says how much you weigh, that is the effect of gravity on you. But anyway, uh, that's the physics teacher coming out of me. So we're just going to keep it simple. Mass, so how much space you take up. So a lot of people would say, how much do you weigh? You give them back their mass. I remember in school we had a pumpkin weighing contest, and then people were guessing, you know, it weighs 5 pounds, 10 pounds. And I was like, this is not a weighing contest. This is a massing contest. So uh, there's a difference, but anyway, don't get too caught up in it. So mass for SI, we usually use kilograms. And in Imperial, we would use pounds. Now for something that was really, really small, like if you're doing a science experiment, chemistry or anything like that, you might use grams. You can even use something smaller than grams, like centigrams or milligrams, again, depending on the prefix. Um, now, I don't know where stones would fall in this thing, but I was watching some uh, British MMA fighting the other night, and the, the fighters were measured in stones. I don't know if that's imperial, but it's, it's, it was fascinating. Um, so what else do we have? We got distance, volume, mass. Let's go... Uh, another measurement that we often think about will be speed. So how fast something is going. So generally in Canada, our speed limits are given in kilometers per hour. In Imperial, uh, if you're traveling within the United States, they're usually given in miles per hour. Just like that. So guys, this is sort of an introduction to, you know, just, just basically knowing where what falls into what category so that's important because if you're making a conversion which is what I'll do the next video on you need to kinda know uh, where you know what unit is what so hopefully this helps you thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in class